This video is for Lab 7, the characterization of an electret microphone. In particular, we're going to be looking at the DC characterization of the microphone, looking at how the current changes as we change the voltage across it. The microphone itself is a two-terminal device, but it's not symmetric. There are um, there's a source and a drain here. The source, the negative end, is this one that's connected by some extra wires here to the can on the outside. The drain, or the positive end, is this other wire. The reason I use the term source and drain there is that they're internally, um, the microphone has a junction field effect transistor. And the gate of that junction field effect transistor is what's connected to the electret and the, diaf um, and the diaphragm. So that's what changes the voltage on the gate. Um, and the source here is the negative end. The drain here is the positive end. And we're going to be interested in how much current we get through this field effect transistor as the gate voltage changes. That's the AC characterization that we're interested in. But the DC characterization is just how much uh, voltage do we get, or how much current do we get with fixed voltage when the gate voltage is not changing. So the characterization we're going to try and do first is just measuring that. So how do we measure it? Well, we're going to be using the analog discovery too, which only measures voltage. So in order to measure current, we will need to have a sense resistor to convert the current into a voltage. And then we will have the microphone. And we have to make sure we orient the microphone the correct way so that we get the positive side of the microphone being the positive side of the FET, the drain. OK. Um, we have to provide a signal to this. So we will use the function generator of the analog discovery 2 to provide a signal here up at the top. Now, the microphone, if we look up characteristics of it, depending on exactly which model of mic you have, generally they have something like a 0 to 10 volt range um, that you can safely put on it. So let's test it over almost that range. Um, and the largest signal we can get out of the analog discovery 2 here is a plus or minus 5 volt signal. But we don't really want a negative voltage. We only want positive voltage. So if we put this other end here at minus 5 volts, now we've got that the voltage difference between these uh, two ends of the chain here go from 0 volts to 10 volts, which is pretty much the range we want to test over. Now, we have to measure uh, the voltage and the current. We can measure the voltage easily enough just by looking at uh, channel 1 across the microphone. We're measuring the voltage of the microphone directly measure the current, we can measure the voltage across the resistor using channel 2. Okay, so only one thing left here to do, and that is to decide how big a resistor do we need. And that depends on how big the current is that we want to measure. If you don't know anything at all about the microphone, you have to guess. Um, but I'll tell you something, and that is that uh, the microphones don't take very much DC current, um, less than a milliamp. So uh, we're going to need to have a resistor that's big enough so that milliamp makes a substantial voltage that can be measured by the analog discovery 2. If we used a tiny resistor, we'd get a tiny voltage, and the analog discovery 2 can't measure tiny voltages very well. Uh, if we're saying we want to measure up to a milliamp, um, we then have, well, how much of the voltage the 10 volts range we have here, are we going to use in the IR drop for this uh, measuring the current? And then only the remaining voltage will be available for uh, putting across the microphone. Figuring 9 volts is probably high enough to measure on, on across the microphone, 1 volt across channel 2. Um, if we have 1 volt across channel 2 and uh, we have up to a milliamp, uh, that sounds like we need a 1k ohm resistor. So let's try that. 
here is my test setup. I've got the Analog Discovery 2 here with um, function generator lead coming in, going through a resistor, and um, we have the blue channel 2 across that resistor. And then I have the two orange leads for channel 1 uh, going to the white lead, which is the negative power supply lead. And now I have to put this in the correct way around so that the negative voltage here lines up with the white negative power supply lead. Okay, so let's now take a look at what we've got here in waveforms. All right, we're going to need to have set up the waveform generator. Uh, we don't want an amplitude of 1 volt, we want an amplitude of 5 volts. All right, we can turn that on. We will need power supply. Uh, we don't need the positive power supply, we can turn that off. We want the negative power supply to be 5 volts, uh, and we can turn that on. So now we're providing the signal. Uh, now we have to turn on the oscilloscope. Okay. Um, we were running one kilohertz, so one millisecond per division seems fine. Um, let's uh, set the trigger level to be five volts. Start running this thing, see if we get anything. Okay, our channel one has not got a wide enough range here. Let's do one volt per division and um, offset this thing by minus five volts. There. Now we've got that showing nicely on the screen. We've also got uh, channel two showing here. Uh, we could increase that to maybe 200 millivolts per division. Um, let's uh, slide it down. I'm going to do something here also. I'm going to turn off the offset of division. The, I'm going to turn on offset as divisions. I'm going to turn off the noise um, so that now we've got the offset. Instead of being zero divisions here, I can go say minus four divisions to get it down here. The reason for using divisions rather than just a, a fixed voltage offset there is that now if I change the sensitivity, like saying, oh, let's go to 500 millivolts per division, it's keeping the baseline still, the zero still, you know, one tenth of the way up from the bottom of the screen. So can I go to 100 millivolts per division? Nope, that's too far. 200 millivolts per division it is. And now, um, and for channel one, I'm also going to turn off noise. It's using the gear icon. Um, okay, so I've got my signal here. What does it mean? What does it look like? Well, it'd be nice if I could see current rather than voltage. And there's a way to do that by adding a channel. We add a channel. We're going to make it a custom channel. And what we'll do is we'll do channel two divided by a thousand. Um, because channel 2 was the voltage across the 1 kilo ohm resistor. If I divide that by 1,000, that should give me the current. I can set the units to amps. And now I've got a current channel here. The units here are pretty silly. I don't want 500 milliamps per division. Let's look at something like um, 200 microamps per division. That looks like about the right scale, but again, I want to set the offsets of divisions and set it down to minus four divisions and now it completely uh, covers what channel two did. It's giving me exactly the same information. The difference is now that if I look at the, this it's in current units, milliamps, rather than in uh, volts which I would have to interpret by knowing what size resistor it was. Um, this doesn't really tell me exactly what I want. I mean the information is all there but I can't look at the current versus voltage here and see it in my head. But I can do the uh, XY plot here to get what I want. But is that what I want? Let's go back and think about what it is that we wanted to see um, in uh, from the plot. Is this really what we expected to see? Uh, turn off the waveforms window so we can get the paper underneath. 
what we were expecting to see from a field effect transistor is current that was initially linear and then saturated. So is that what we're getting? Doesn't look much like it. Something's wrong. For one thing, we're not getting a simple curve where current is a function of voltage. We're getting something with, with a loop in it, something that's got hysteresis, got memory. And that's not what we want to see here. What could be going wrong? Well, one thing that could be going wrong is that we have the wrong model for um, for our microphone. This model is missing something. One thing it's missing is a parasitic capacitor. That parasitic capacitance will have an effect if we put in something other than a DC signal. If we put in an AC signal, um, if we raise the drain voltage here, then we're also going to raise the gate voltage. And that's going to change what current we get through here. If we lower the drain voltage, we'll lower the gate voltage. So what does that do? Well, the gate to source, which is the controlling voltage for the field effect transistor, um, is going to change. And because that's a junction, a diode junction, when we have raise it, we will uh, bias the diode forward direction, increase the current through it, but when we um, uh, lower the voltage we will reverse bias the diode and uh, get much less current through it. So we have different characteristics for a rising voltage and a falling voltage and that's what gives us this sort of different behavior going up and coming down and gives us that opening of the loop. So how can we eliminate this problem? Well one thing we could do is since we're trying to make a DC measurement is to make the effect of the capacitor smaller by increasing the impedance of the capacitor, that is to say, lowering the frequency. So why don't we do the same test again, but lower the frequency with which we do it. So let's uh, bring back waveforms here. And um, going over the waveform generator, change one, the one kilohertz, let's take it all the way down to one hertz. Okay, same thing we were doing before, but now just one hertz rather than one kilohertz. And we need to change from one millisecond to division, probably do about one second per division. And I'm going to use uh, shift instead of um, repeat on this so that uh, as it gets to the edge of the screen it'll just keep sliding over. When you've got a slow enough scan rate uh, this thing can act as if it was uh, continuously recording instead of just in batches. If we look now we can see we've got um, well the curve here is looking a little bit smaller. Let's, um, let's change from 200 mi microamps per division to maybe 50 microamps per division. Ah. We're looking at channel 2 here. Let's look at uh, in current units. Well, we've got something now here that's at the beginning is looking like it's got that uh, upward linear jump, but we're still seeing kind of an open curve here in the saturation region. So it's better. It's looking closer to what we've got, but we still have an open loop here that's got uh, the memory. What can we do about that? We could try going to an even slower uh, even lower frequency, making the capacitor even less of a problem. So let's try that. Go to wave gen, and instead of uh, 1 hertz, let's uh, take it down to mm, 100 millihertz. So it takes 10 seconds now um, to get through waveform. And sure enough, that's closed the loop way down. It's looking almost like what we want to see. Still a little bit of memory there but much less than before. What can we do about that? We could try going even further. Uh, it gets slower and slower each as we do it, and now it takes 10 seconds for us to get uh, the entire curve, but 
10 seconds isn't that much. I've been talking a lot more longer than that. Um, so let's go back to waveform generator and let's take this down, oh, 20 millihertz. Now it's going to take like 50 seconds to make to, to do the recording. And I think we may need to go to um, longer than uh, one second per division. Let's go to five seconds per division. So it's going to take about 50 seconds to do an entire period of this thing. And that's what we've got across the screen here. Well, we're about to get to that uh, far voltage there. And it is coming back down. It's coming back down almost on the same curve. It looks like it's just you know one pixel lower here in the in the in the image. So very close to what we had. Um, then we have the, the linear region. And we start coming back up the linear region. And pretty soon we will have completed an entire period. There, we've got the entire period now. And what we can do, we could stop this and we could export it. Let's see the export window there. The export uh, shows you uh, the time, both voltage channels, the current, which is derived from the second voltage channel. So they carry the same information, but uh, it's convenient to have it in terms of current. We can make sure that we've got the comments, all the notes. You can add notes here about what you were measuring and how you were doing it. And then um, just save the data. Uh, you do want to always save the data here um, uh, because, and not the image, because you want to be able to plot this thing and analyze it. You don't want to be limited to just the very low resolution you get from this oscilloscope picture. Um, so uh, we've got what we want here, linear region, followed by um, the saturation region, but you notice that the saturation region here is not the constant that is uh, suggested by the simplest models of FETs. It does increase with voltage, um, but not nearly as steeply as what happened in the linear region. Generally, when we use the microphone, we want to use it a little ways into the saturation region. Um, I believe the manufacturer for this uh, uh, microphone was suggesting something like three, three to five volts uh, across the microphone, which puts you comfortably into the into the saturation region. You can probably get by with uh, biases as low as uh, one and a half volts and still be in the saturation region. Okay, that's about it for this lab. Um, measure your own microphones and see what happens.